So coming out of the Hubbard's Hole, we've reached an area of the wall down, way down there. So and we're getting these almost melted looking little crystals here. And I'm thinking they might be zircon. I can kind of see a, a curved shadow edge within them. And uh, in the sunlight, there's kind of a brief glint of reddish. So we're not sure. I'm going to have to check at home. Yeah, when I get them home, we'll use the spectrometer and see if I can get some... Uh, a zircon reading on it. In other words, you're going to see a, a pattern of black lines indicating the, the radiation within a zircon. If not, other options, it could be a melted quartz or it could be, I mean, I haven't even tested. It feels a lot harder and less resinous than apatite, so I'll rule that one out. Um, quartz being the other option then. So Kathy's got a thing on her phone, an AI app, or not even an app, an AI, which identifies minerals and it's looking at that and calling it Libyan desert glass. Uh, in other words, like a tektite or something like superheated silica from a maybe a meteor striking. This is not the case. This is coming from way down deep in the fissure. It's a wall rock. Um, so again, as I say, I'm hoping with the spectroscope I can maybe see some some example of why you would be able to call it a zircon. If not, it's definitely quartz then. It's just a nice little rock hound day on a Friday. We don't usually have a lot of people on a Friday, but Hubbard's Hole, uh, Marcus found a pocket underneath the floor and what he's doing right now, it's just filled with appetites. So we're figuring all the titanites that dropped from this side wall went down and have probably washed underneath there. We're hoping that's the case. We'll know shortly. Ah, there we go. Okay, that came from underneath there. That's 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 that you were talking about your mark, I think, when we Yeah, left. yeah. My mark is in the hole. <laughs> yeah. Mm. You can see I am being watched. Yeah. We are being watched. He's coming. <laughs> oh, look at him. Oh, oh, I got him eating the car. Oh my god, they're out. Oh, that thing's just full of them. Yeah. <laughs> the whole family. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to have enough food for the week. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll say. Crackers for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, those didn't turn out the kind of bite. He's checking out. So how did you guys stumble upon this place? Um, just... There's Mark down. Getting down there. Hopefully reaching the tight night soon. That's a big hole to dig. A few rotten ones in the wall. Oh, really, eh? Yeah. Oh, good. Excellent. This is Bailey. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and look what she found some really nice feldspars in there beautiful thank you Bailey no problem yeah that is a nice one yeah oh they, these will be beautiful um, absolutely beautiful when you've cleaned them up that is fantastic gotta admit different to rock hound with uh, fingernails like that uh yeah you know what? I didn't get them done specifically because I knew I'd break them all okay so I like waited <laughs> you good thing to do yeah <laughs> So in following up to um, Bailey's uh, direction that she just gave me, uh, this looks to be the side, the side fissure in, on the edge of, of Brokeback, okay? Brokeback being uh, where Mark had uh, screwed his back up so bad the other, I think it was uh, early spring or last spring, everything melds into one. But this undercutting seems to follow all along the edge here. And I found some really good stuff in there. Like, you can just kind of see, you know, I haven't been able to clean it up or anything like that, but you can kind of see um, that this very well defined with the crystals. Um, and so this looks like our next digging area, right? This undercut ledge. And as I say, clearly it follows along here as well. Um, 
and goes that way. So digging under the ledge broke back with the mica schist on the side, the calcite on the other side, not giving us much. The wall rock on the other hand, right near the top, this sort of overlying layer, it almost looks like an augite or something, just heavily encrusted with crystals. And quite honestly, like, I myself am very, very much surprised. Um, I, I thought this was done. I thought we were ready to fill this hole in. And there she goes, uh, you know, uh, Bailey, and finds this, those feldspar crystals, which in turn led on to my discoveries. And I'll, I'll show you a picture of this particular crystal or matrix once I've cleaned it up. But yeah, it's been a, a pretty successful day so far here on the claim. Everybody seems to be finding what they like. That's good. Hole. And, you know, for whatever reason, Hubbard's hole changes to this kind of thing about uh, 20 feet from where it's been dug with the mica schist on the wall, the pockets under the side, and of course, just some incredible, look at the matrix, hey, like you've got, you got feldspar in there, I can see apatite, pyroxene, um, you know, this is kind of, I'm going to probably put this on my desk at home, I like it that much, some very lustrous pyroxenes too, so it's not like it's just one kind of pyroxene, I mean, that's super lustrous, you know, and then somewhere around here, you know, I've noticed on other sides, distinctly look, different looking uh, pyroxenes, right? So, yeah, transport it back to the car, and uh, it's a beautiful find for the day, I must admit. I'm very happy with it. And uh, thank you so much to Bailey for putting me back onto this area.